everyone, it's Linda again. So the first app that I created and I would like to show you. This app, well, basically I had this bright idea. Well, if Google can't do it, well, I sure as heck can. So what I did was I recreated that iconic video that they gave us last week where they showed a a webcam and asking Gemini stuff and they showed it real time. Well, they implied it was real time, but we all know it wasn't real time. Now, why wasn't it real time? Well, that's because Gemini doesn't take streaming images from a webcam. You have to send it still pictures. Now, the first version of this app that I did, I went ahead and basically had it sending pictures every 30 seconds, I think, to Gemini. So I could type something and I, I could just send pictures to Gemini every 30 seconds and it would tell me what it saw. And it was actually pretty good. You know, I see a woman sitting there with a bird and, you know, plants in the background and an award in the back background. So, I mean, it, it, it works fine. You know, does, does, uh, does exactly what it's supposed to do. My second version was a little bit different because I wanted to be able to include the text and ask it questions about what it was seeing, right? So basically I put up a text field and then had a button so that when I was done typing, I could send a button, it would take the screenshot and send it over to Gemini and have Gemini respond. And this actually worked really well. I could, you know, how did you like my hair? And Apparently it loves my hair and my hair is very stylish, I guess, you know, and then I would, I would like hold things up. I mean, what am I holding? And it, and it could tell me that I was holding up a, a bus. And I started to think that this, this could actually be very useful. Now, my grandmother is no longer with us, but when she was, she was blind and she always had issues with, uh, for example, money she would have to go to the bank and they have to fold over the corners on the bills to see what they, you know, so that she would be able to know what they were. So with this, I could hold up a bill and, or, a, you know, the paper money and have Gemini tell me what it was. So in a lot of instances, just having the video multimodal capability along with Gemini to be able to ask it questions about what it would see is probably going to be groundbreaking for helping visually impaired people. It's, it's pretty impressive. Now, they also showed that it was able to do audio. Now, unfortunately for, I, I, I haven't, I haven't seen any examples of it doing audio via the API. Now this is getting a little long, so I think we should just run the code and have a look at it. Okay, so welcome back. We're gonna try and piece this together. I'm going to have to do some slight editing on this. But this is the sample project that I will be open sourcing probably by now. If you're seeing this, then the project is most likely open sourced already. You're welcome to go ahead and use it. Um, it already. So a couple of notes. To run this, you need both an API key, which was created over in AI Studio, I think is what they're calling it now. Now it's Google AI Studio. So you go over at Google AI Studio, you create yourself a API key, then you need to go over on your uh, Google developer or Google cloud console and create a service account in the same project. It needs to be in the same project and download the JSON service account key. Uh, there, there's reasons why you need to do this. It's just, you, yeah, just go ahead and create both of those. Once you've done that, that should be saved inside of a .env file. Now I'm not including the .env when I upload it to, um, to GitHub for obvious reasons. So go ahead, create your own .env and then you'll be able to run this. The whole thing runs through the app.py. Uh, I created this as a Windows application. You could probably, 
all this does is, is it creates a Windows app and then when the user clicks on the button, right, then it goes ahead and captures an image and sends it over to Gemini. So all the magic happens inside of this Gemini Pi file, okay? We are going to load our uh, environmental variables, the, AI, the API key and the service account credentials. Again, if you don't know how to create them, I have a video on how to create service account credentials. Then at the top of the file, I'm denoting my uh, configuration and safety settings. I didn't touch these. These are standard safety settings and standard, you know, temperature and all that. Go ahead and play around with it if you want. For me, I just leave everything standard for now. This is just testing. I just want to show you how to get this to work. That's it. Now, again, Gemini is multimodal, which means we can send more than one type of prompt to it. So you can send it text and an image, right? So I have a simple sample here, which goes ahead. Everything that we send to the API goes through the client. So we need to configure it a couple of things here. We need to create an image part that sends the bit array or the binary array to the API. So you need to send it as a binary array. You don't just upload the picture. So in, in actual, this is probably a little bit easier. And you tell it what MIME type it is. It's very critical to make sure that you get your MIME type right. Don't send it a PDF when you're actually sending a, you know, a JPEG. Uh, trust me, I did that. It was, it didn't work. So once you do that, you create, you send these as content, because if you want to send text, then you send the text part, right? So we're sending an image part and a text part in this case. So I'm adding the, to the content of my request. This is the body of the request. I send the image part and the text part, and I tell it a role. That is why this is actually really nice because I can tell it that this data is coming from the user, right? So I could create a second one of these, which would be the response that I got from the API in a previous call. So you could have API and then, I don't remember what it was called, AI or something, and then user. So you're sending one or the other so that it knows, you can actually do conversational it can remember the conversation. I haven't tested that part yet. I want to get this out to you now and then I'll add conversational stuff later. Um, then we send this to the Gemini provision model. Now that is another thing that is very critical with this. There's two different models to consider. The Gemini pro model is the text only one. You send, you can, it's like the old Bison model. You could only send text to it. Whereas Gemini pro vision, requires that you send it an image. You don't have to send it text, but you must send an image. So if you're actually having a conversation with this API and you're sending both text and text and image or just, or both text and image data in two different calls, you are going to have to swap back and forth between the models. Honestly, I think they could fix the API and have the AP uh, or have the, the, the source code, fix the source code to detect, am I sending an image or not? If I'm not, then use this one. If I'm not, if I am, use the other one. But anyways, this is how their library is created and that's what they've done. So um, this is what we have. This is what we're going to use. Then once we've created the request itself, which includes the model, the contents of your request, and then the config and the safety settings, then we just send it over there and we wait for it to come back. Now, again, I created a second one, which just creates the text and sends it to Gemini Pro. So I've given you in this sample, two different versions. If you want, you can run just this file and I can show it to you running now. What it does is uh, there's a, a picture, an image sitting up on um, 
uh, up on Google Cloud Storage of scones, and I'll I'll add it in the in the edit here. So it just downloads that file for you, and then it's going to send it over to as you can see here, it's creating it to bytes. Then it takes the text, what do you see, and sends it the image. Then I have another call which just does text, who is James C. Kirk, right? And then if we run this current file, again, I'm using PyCharm. I always use PyCharm. You can use whatever you want. Um, so we go ahead and run the current file. Now, it saw, it actually came back very quickly, the fact that it saw in the image that it can see blueberry scones, a table with coffee and jam. And then it took it a little bit longer to come up with a response about who is James T. Kirk, right? So, you know, maybe we should celebrate his birthday. Anyways, there. That is the basic usage of the new API to use the Gemini models. This is not the same as the API that we used for Palm. Remember that. So now we stop this. Okay, welcome back. Now, this is my Gemini video demo running, okay? So the, what you're seeing here in the, in the video feed is actually inside of the app, right? So I can hold on conversations with, with Gemini now. So I can ask it what it sees, and then I can send the requ request to it. Now remember, what you're seeing is real time. I'm not gonna edit this. Google edited it. I'm not editing it. This is how long it takes it to come back, right? Now, if you want to be absolutely sure that it's, that it's actually seeing. Now, this is probably why Google edited it, because it takes time to get these responses back and forth from the API. For me, it's probably a little bit longer because again, I'm based in Denmark and right now Gemini and most of Google stuff is not available in Europe. To access it, I have to be running a VPN. So that in and itself makes it probably a little bit shorter or a, a little longer actually. Um, now, Let's try and, and ask it something else. So if I ask it, what am I holding? And then I grab one of my um, scary Rubik's cubes here and I ask it, okay, what am I holding? It's going to think about it again. It knows that it's a 3D puzzle. It doesn't know which one, but I don't think that there's many people that know which one this is. So if you know which cube this is, please let me know, okay? Um, so, but I actually had a thought, all right? It, it, what is my next move? If, if I wanna solve this, what's my next move, right? So could I give it the images of like a six by six and ask it to solve the six by six? Could it figure it out if I gave it each one of the images? So I'm not, I haven't actually tried. So it, it could be interesting to see if you gave it more than one image, could it figure it out or could it piece it together how to, how to solve it? Could, it? could it come up with the actual algorithm needed to solve it? Because if, if you know anything about Rubik's Cubes, you, once you, some of the really good people, they could, just, they could just look at it and they know exactly what they need to do to solve the entire puzzle. That's how they do it blindfolded. So if we said, what is my next move to solve this? And then I, uh, I, I kind of, one of the things I think is, is strange is that the, the video is actually reversed. And I, I don't know, it's, you'll find that if you, if you run this code, um, maybe I'll have to fix it. So the next move would be to turn this off the, see, in, in that it's wrong because this is actually um, the solution for a, like a three by three. <coughs> the first thing that you would do is make the cross. So 
Gemini is really nice because of the fact that it's multimodal. You can send both images and text, which opens up a whole new world. Now, I haven't actually checked the, the, the actual response, but I actually think that it's longer. Um, bison, the input length from bison was, bison is the old model that we had, right? Uh, it's the one that, that, ran ch that we've been using for a while now. Uh, the input token limit for Bison was 8,196. The output token limit was 1024. Now, if we check... Yeah, Gemini Pro, the input token limit is 30,720, right? And the output limit is... Uh, 2048. So we went from a, a input limit of 8,000 with bison to 30,000, right? And the output limit this is the, this is what it, you know, the output limit from 1,000 to 2,000, you know? So they gave us a lot more with this Gemini Pro model. Now, Pro Image or Pro Vision is uh, an input limit of 12,000 and an output limit of 44,600. Uh, that's pretty decent that it gives. That's, that's a really impressive output token limit for, um, for, for Pro Vision. Pro Vision gives you a bigger output limit than any of the other ones. Pro Vision and, and Edit. So um, let me go edit this. And um, as always, if you liked the video, remember to like and subscribe. And um, yeah, that's it. I hope you have a great day and I hope you enjoy uh, working with, uh, with Maker Suite and, uh, or, well, AI Studio and Gemini. Have some fun with Gemini and let me know what you make because I can't wait to hear it. Okay.